He's a dancer and an art and community educator, part of several B-Boy Crews, community organizations, and has even given a TEDx talk. We talk about his work, accomplishments, travels from Asia to the Arctic, and later in the podcast, we talk about his mindset and philosophies, and now he's gotten to accomplish everything. Today's guest on My Best Life podcast is Marcel Frost de Costa. Welcome to my best life podcast with Flavia Abadia. We are a new inspirational and motivational podcast featuring people with positive mindsets achieving tremendous things with tips, advice, and life lessons to help you live your best life. Today's episode is brought to you by Scoria. Spark the child within with signature cork yoga mats and accessories by using the code MYBESTLIFE at checkout for 15% off your order. Hello and welcome to My Best Life Podcast. I'm Flavia Abadia and today's very special guest is Marcel Frost da Costa. Hello, he, hello. he is from Ground Illusions, 20th Century B-Boys, One Unit Tribe, Conscious Souls, Canadian Floor Masters, B-Boyism, Unity, Blueprint for Life, and Storytime. Yeah, a it's lot. A <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Welcome. It's Thanks awesome to have you. Thanks for having me here. I appreciate it. Yeah. So for people who don't know, you're a B-boy, you're in the hip hop scene and you're doing a lot of work with communities. Mm -hmm. How did you first get into being a B-boy? Well, I'm, I was born in the 80s and uh, growing up, I was always exposed to uh, 80s, 90s music. Mm -hmm. I was part of the generation that was exposed to you know much music when it was still playing a lot of yeah. music videos and hip-hop culture when it was it was booming and in fact in its original essence mm -hmm. so um i was exposed to all of that um you know hearing a tribe called quest and black moon and wu-tang and and all kinds of um you know hip-hop artists that were getting played in the mainstream war mainstream at the time and in any case by the time i was in high school i was about 14 years old 14 15 years old and um, there's a lot of guys who were my peers who mm -hmm. i'd grown up seeing in elementary school and otherwise and they were starting to get down because uh you know rapper's delight came out like the remake of rapper's delight mm -hmm. uh and rocksteady crew was in it or you know um the run dmc remix with jason nevins it's so, like that came out um there was a lot of uh footage from like on much music through like you know bag of tricks on much music intricate crew on, on much music so my whole generation was was booming like yeah everyone was a teenager was like interested in breaking or people who liked hip-hop music right mm -hmm. so i was exposed to, i was watching it i was intrigued by it but when i was 14 15 uh one of my best friends he passed away uh, oh, in the neighborhood okay. and it was a very tragic uh um uh, incident so okay. for me that that took to me obviously yeah, you can yeah. imagine how i felt i was really afraid i was really uh at a loss of my own personal identity uh it was traumatic for me Okay. And I needed something to do. I needed people to chill with. Yeah. And I needed something to reclaim my, my own identity and, and to be around positive people. Yeah. So um, the breakers in my school, they were the guys that kind of embraced me. Mm -hmm. And uh, they, they encouraged me to, to be with them after school every day. Or, you know, okay. I got to the point where I was going to school, um, you know, seven in the morning, every morning practicing for an hour before class. And then at lunchtime, we eat some lunch, practice for 40 minutes. And after school, practice for two hours. That was like every day. That's cool. Yeah. And then, you know, eventually I started um, going on my spares or sometimes like, mm -hmm. you know, if I did my homework or if I felt like, you know, the class wasn't relevant <coughs> at that time, <laughs> I would kind of skip school so or whatever. To dance. I'm not, yeah. I'm not promoting, yeah. you know, skipping education because education is very important. But yeah. there were times where I felt I could I could make that sacrifice. And I went to different schools. This is pre um, social media era. I mean, mm -hmm. you had things like Asian Avenue and ICQ Messenger and stuff like that was on. Um, and you, you'd hear and, and make connections with people, but the best way was word of mouth, seeing people in person. Yeah. And I would visit local high schools, and I'd get involved in, you know, crash talent shows and. <laughs> and you just crash talent shows? <laughs> what do you mean? You would just like jump on stage and dance? Yeah, I, I would usually make friends in those schools and find ways to get into the talent show, like oh, in Applewood okay. or in like, you know, St. Joe's or you know Father Gates and. And uh, I started to assemble. This is all in a crew. Mississauga. This is all in Mississauga. Yeah. I started to assemble a crew. Mm -hmm. And uh, at first we were called Overload, Overloaded Maneuvers, OLM. Okay. And uh, that was in 1998. 
and then eventually we stumbled f- you know, around a few names and then we fell upon ground illusions yeah and that was a name that that really stuck and it was a, a collaboration between you know some of, some of us from phil pocock uh, father mm-hmm. gates saint joe's um and, and we all started uh, practicing together at the Mississauga valley's community center uh, by the time it was 1999, we were competing mm-hmm. downtown at, at uh, you know, back to the underground held by Supernaturals. We started meeting guys like Boogie Brats. We started meeting uh, Bag of Tricks. We started meeting Intricate and Top Notch and all the other legendary crews and, and mm-hmm. breakers. And uh, we, we, cool. we put a strong foot forward, you know, between 1999, uh, 1998, 99, all the way to 2003, Ground Illusions became one of Canada's predominant Hip hop b boy collectives, yeah. and our were, our name was getting around the country before the internet was really strong, because we were winning a lot of competitions. We were starting to do uh, performances, yeah. um, and just getting out there, you know. And you're still like strong today, so. Yeah, we're yeah fairly big. We have a lot of international uh, recognition and a strong mm. reputation. We've had probably 50 members um, throughout the course of almost 20 years. Next year, it's going to be 20 years. And uh, yeah. there's membership all across the GTA. We have, mm-hmm. you know. That, so that's the greater Toronto area. The greater Toronto yeah. area. And, uh, you know, guys in, in Korea and in Taiwan and Japan that represent our name as well. And, and, that's and sick. in the United States as well. So so are they originally from here or they're, they're native to their countries um, and areas? One of the guys, uh, Tiny Touch, mm-hmm. uh, okay, Uno, who's in Japan, who lives uh, close to Nagoya City. Um, he's originally from Japan, but came here on a working holiday visa. Oh, okay. And shout out to Uno. He just had his little girl, Akari. Um, shout out to you, bro. Congratulations. So, oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Mm-hmm. And then from B-Boying, I know you're a part of so many different projects yep. of helping the community. You also do a lot of work with the indigenous community. Mm-hmm. So how did all that come about? Well, you know, after 2003 and, and the crew was really strong doing our mm-hmm. thing we started getting to the point where a lot of us were attending college and, and pursuing other things outside of dance as an interest right mm-hmm. so there was a bit of a hiatus with ground illusions okay um you know battling and whatnot and uh i was in i went to college a couple of times at that point and the first time was for visual arts and whatnot and i was okay. uh, in the middle of schooling that I was Mm -hmm. really concerned about my community and accessibility for people who liked doing what I do in the community and the lack thereof right so then I went back to college and I started doing community outreach and development at Sheridan and uh, I was able to acquire an internship which brought me inside the city and I was starting to implement uh, programming through different mm-hmm. community centers and it was specifically hip-hop based programming where Sick. people were learning dancing they were practicing writing graffiti mm-hmm. and I was able to throw events uh, with partnership and in partnership with the city of Mississauga so that uh, level of grassroots community development work um, mm-hmm. I started you know administering after my schooling was what uh, you know built some some shine on my end and so uh, how old were you when I was like in my early twenties. Okay, so you, yeah, okay. I was like twenty one, twenty two, okay, nice. and I threw like my first jam inside inside the city, and okay, and it was a big deal because we we had the whole day. It was called the Word Project. Okay, and there was, um, you know, workshops that were collaborative workshops. So you'd mm-hmm. have a capoeiratista and a b boy work together. You had a spoken word artist and an MC work together. You had okay. jazz drummer and a heavy metal drummer work together, and an art gallery show. That's sick. Yeah, and there was a lot of artists before they were signed, like Ill Scarlet, you know, Major One. Um, the Junction, Mellon Grove Band. They were all at your jam? Yeah, we had a big like performance concert night and a fashion show from Ryerson. And, and the guys at Ryerson, uh, they really helped me out. And eventually those guys ended up creating Manifesto. So this was kind of like a, a oh. pre-Manifesto type of thing. So uh, for people who don't know, Manifesto is... Well, they do several workshops in Toronto for artists. They also have a big festival in the summer. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. It's a big undertaking. So, you know, that was kind of some of my initial startup in, in doing mm-hmm. community development and, and working with these, uh, these drop-ins. And how that's relevant is that um, I started teaching a lot of students. And a lot of those students that I was teaching ended up becoming... A part of the Ground Illusions. They were the new generation of Ground Illusions crew members. Oh, okay, nice. You know, like Damon, and Yumi, and Christian, and Aaron. Mm-hmm. And uh, we acquired new members like Willie Ways and whatnot. And, uh, you know, after doing that work, by the time it was 2007, 
uh, Stephen Lefleur, aka Buddha, from the Canadian Floor Masters, uh, who started Blueprint for Life in 2006. And I was okay. interested in his work. Cause, so, you know, what is Blueprint for Life? So Blueprint for Life is a um, is a social work consulting company. Okay. And it was uh, created by Buddha, mm-hmm. uh, Stephen. Um, as a project, like a one, it was meant to just be a one-time thing. He was okay. supposed to go up to Nunavut in, in Iqaluit, okay. uh, the capital of Nunavut, because he has a, a sister and he's got three Inuit nieces. Oh, She's nice. married to an Inuk man. Um, so that's in the north of Canada. Yeah. So um, that was all. Bro- that was broadcasted. I think it was mm-hmm. on CBC or, or uh, CTV. Mm-hmm. And um, the project was going to the community, working for a week long with about a hundred youth. Uh, oh, okay. and sharing yeah. hip-hop culture with them but also um, and encouraging them to to practice their own culture and, and integrate it and mix it together mm-hmm. what ended up being a one-time thing ended up being like a multiple like yeah. many year 11 years later um, traveling to 60 communities over the past so long you know a decade nice. and then working in young offender centers across Canada but okay. in its initial stages I had spoken to Buddha out of just genuine sincere interest in what he was doing mm. just to hear about what it was and to talk yeah. to him in relation to what I was doing and to ask him for some support. So I wasn't really asking him to go on, <laughs> on these trips. I had yeah. no idea that was the scope or that's where I'd be heading. But I think because I came to him um, with a humble heart and I was just curious mm-hmm. genuinely because it related to my own work, he ended up putting me on uh, in 2007 and I started working. Um, I went to Pang, Pang Rittung Nunavut, okay. uh, up in the high Arctic. It was my first trip. Um, with Damn, the Blueprint so Squad. Cold. <laughs> yeah, it was cold, but it's really mystical and it was crazy oh, okay. in, in a way where I got to, you know, meet Inuit, my art Inuit community for the first time, and I got to, you know, see a people with a beautiful sense of humor, okay. with uh, deep culture and cultural values, but also a lot of uh, a lot of trouble from uh, the way our Canadian government has has uh, yeah. treated our indigenous community. And uh, I'm, I'm seeing the same youth that I had worked with when they were 14 years old. Mm-hmm. Now they're young adults and have their own families, are really proud of the culture, are okay. su- becoming more successful. You know, there, there are a lot yeah. of great examples and great stories out there. So that was kind of how I started doing that work. And eventually Blueprint ended up opening a not-for-profit arm, which was able to allow us to work uh, with the young offenders and young offender centers all across the country maximum security nice, wow. uh, institutions um, we've been to about maybe six young offender centers across the country and okay. multiple uh, follow-up uh, programs as well and uh, acquiring gangs and guns grants from the federal government and whatnot and I work really closely with some of the best art facilitators and hip-hop artists okay. educators from across Canada and, and have been members from the United States that have come up as well um, you wow. know like Frankie and and whatnot so yeah, that's been an interesting ride, and at the same time, working with Unity Charity uh, since two thousand nine. Yeah, so we interviewed yes. Mike. If you Michael want, Crossman, you can, yeah, the you man can pieces. You can brother. listen to that podcast. That's episode ten. Check it out. Yeah. He's a big inspiration and a good friend. So yeah, awesome dude. Mm-hmm. So okay, how did you even? Okay, so many questions. <laughs> it's it's um, a long story. <laughs> yeah, like even when you're at the young offenders centers, like how. Because it's a difficult situation. Maybe mm-hmm. people aren't receptive to having you at first. How do you mm. like wrap your head around everything and how are the programs? Well, we have a particular formula where okay. um, firstly, firstly, we're coming into the, the, the center yeah. um, just as ourselves, yeah. as practicing artists, as human beings, as okay. people who... You know, we have our own troubles that we're going on in our life. Yeah. We have our own things that we've done in the past that are mistakes that we've made and, mm-hmm. and experiences that we've had and, and successes we've had as well. So we're coming to these spaces not as superstars or as people yeah. who are higher than anyone. Our power dynamic is very uh, is equal, as equal it is, as it can be. Okay. Um, but we, uh, we share a lot of structure in the space. So okay. we were encouraging people with our own stories mm-hmm. and raising honest discussion, having honest talks every day of things that are relevant. You know, we're talking about, you know, uh, managing anger. We're talking about how you're contributing to the community, uh, treatment of, of women and whatnot, and, and, and the journey of trying to understand what that means uh, mm-hmm. for all of us. You know, uh, we're talking about, um, you know, how we look at ourselves, you know, self concepts. We're talking about a lot of different things that are relevant to best practice, okay. and uh, you know, 
and when we're working in the, in the north, for example, um, the topics are, are similar, but they, they slightly vary. You know, we're talking about bullying, yeah. we're talking about positive, negative images in the media, historical yeah. context in relation to hip hop. We're talking about drug abuse, substance abuse, physical abuse, suicide. Like our subjects get deeper, yeah. um, the, the better our relationship increases with the youth in practice. And we're with them from nine to five every day, pushing okay. them, or pushing ourselves as well. Yeah. We're dancing, we're incorporating spoken word. Mm -hmm. um, poetry, um, for instance, going back to the Young Offender Centers, they're getting journals um, okay, ev every day good. and they're encouraged to journal and, and write out mm -hmm. uh, the lessons and we're putting all of our discussion and the results of our discussions up on the board so people can see it every day. And okay. um, we work towards a goal of uh, presentation by the Friday evening and uh, the presentation involves there's like a two hour type of thing okay. where you know there's usually like a like a rap performance or a spoken word performance a graffiti mural that's unveiled that's been worked on the whole week um and in most cases like a battle or like a big cypher with all the youth okay and uh um, in relation to the different uh, communities that we we've attended um mm -hmm. a lot of um cultural uh, traditional arts are integrated in what we do so we're not going into spaces um, kind of promoting hip-hop uh, as just the only means to express we mm -hmm. we understand that hip-hop is something that um, you know has over time become something that is really open and the nature of it is is inclusive of everyone you yeah know? so that's the, the approach that we have and we encourage people to be themselves and be proud of who they are because you know and in New York and the South Bronx, from my understanding and from the people that I've spoken to who are from there, mm -hmm. um, you know, hip hop coming up with something for people to be free, to yeah. be able to celebrate, for, to uplift themselves and to be proud of who they are and where they come from. Um, and that's what we promote when we're doing these pro programs. So, yeah. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. So how do you incorporate indigenous culture in the programs when you're up north? Um, well, most of the time, if not every time, mm -hmm. we we always have either an elder or a local artist or a local leader or many um, integrated in our programming as well. Okay, and, that's good. So it's more grassroots. Most yeah. definitely. We, yeah. we, we can't do it any other way. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. you know, going into those spaces, um, you know, we'll, we do things like, for instance, we'll smudge with the kids in the morning. So like, what is smudging? So smudging is, is part of... Um, indigenous tradition, Anishinaabe tradition, and our native tradition here in, mm. in Canada, where often we're taking, you know, some of the medicines like um, like sage or sweet grass, mm -hmm. um, and there's others like cedar and whatnot. But like usually we're using sage or sweet grass, and and we're smudging with the youth, and we're um, so performing you, like, ceremony. Burn it, and yeah. the smoke goes in yeah. the air, and yeah. Yes, and we allow the smoke to, um, you know. Wa we wash and cleanse our bodies and our spirit and our, and our you know, our, all of our elements, our physical, okay. our spiritual, our emotional, um, you know, all, all at once. And um, if you want to know more mm -hmm. about what we do in regards to the traditional aspect and what we're taking part in, um, it's wise to speak with, you know, uh, indigenous representatives in your community and learn more about that and learn directly from them. Um, so how do you even find that? Because I've... I find in general, well, at least where I went to school, we weren't taught about this. Like, I don't know. Right. I don't know much about Aboriginal culture, mm -hmm. which is a shame. Like, I know one of my first ancestors from France married an Aboriginal woman. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So that's like in my lineage really far back. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. I don't know anything. So how do we well, find out more? Um, there are friendship centers and there are other locations and and there you know our, our native brothers and sisters are all around us in the country mm. and the best way to to find out is um when you come across um you know our community mm. ask our community directly or, or ask them where you could find an elder okay um, and then you can learn more directly from them i guess just google like well, aboriginal friendship centers perhaps yeah yeah okay. that, that's definitely a good way to do it um I'm not at liberty to to share um you know so much information because you know i'm i'm canadian as i was born here my mm -hmm. parents are portuguese descent so there's only okay. so much that i can share but yeah. i could definitely um in regards to what i know it's mm -hmm. always going back to the root and if you want to know anything go back to the root and you can learn directly from the foundation of, yeah. of people who are the bloodline and then they'll share the philosophy um and every culture and every nation is different 
Mm-hmm. Uh, everyone has their own language and their own way. And, um, but um, I can definitely say that in my experience, is always tied to nature. It's always tied to uh, a natural harmony between us and our environment, okay. and with the people all around us. And um, yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot to learn, mm-hmm. and there's a lot of uh, my native brothers and sisters across the country who are learning about their own culture um, due to a lot of the the, the genocide and a lot yeah. of the um, you know negativity that has happened in the past over the last 60, 70 years and beyond that. Yeah. So. Um, every, we're all learning, we're all students, and we're all trying to t- take mm-hmm. it in. And, and these experiences on these trips, for me traveling all over Canada, I've, I've been uh, privileged and honored to see and, and be part of a lot of different types of ceremonies to, to okay. um, you know, experience a lot of different type of medicines. And, and uh, I could just leave it at that. Okay. You know? yeah, yeah, maybe I'll get like mm-hmm. an elder or something. To you sh- I would recommend. Yeah. You know, there's a guy I know, his name is Eddie Robinson. You okay. should look him up. He's awesome, dude. He can share a lot of, um, you know, okay. good things with you. Okay, yeah, cool. With everyone listening, too. Okay, yeah. I'll look into that. Yeah. Definitely. Many people out there, you know. Yeah. Shout out to my homies across Canada. You know who you are. Much yeah. respect, much love to you. <laughs> 20th Century B Boys, uh, that's my crew in Korea. So, okay. Um, we celebrated our 15 year anniversary just this past, uh, or oh, last year. Oh, cool. Um, I got inducted into the crew. Um, it's almost two years now I've been in this okay. crew. Okay. And uh, through my, my programs and project support with Storytime, mm-hmm. which I'll just talk about it very soon. Yeah. Um, I met uh, one of the leaders of, Stor- of uh, excuse me, of 20th Century E-Boys, uh, Dark Horse. Mm-hmm. And I met him in a jam in Kingston. We were judging together. And he said to me, you know, after we built like a good rapport and, and we're the same generation, same age and everything. Mm-hmm. He said, you have to come to Korea for our anniversary. <laughs> and I'll come through. I was like, all right, cool. So when I was in Japan, I, I mm-hmm. took a trip over to Korea and I was able to uh, do some workshops and judge the competition and, and teach in prestigious places like the Hanlim School for the Arts mm-hmm. and, uh, and share my, my perspective and my methodology in terms of b-boying with, you know, and just the way my pedagogy and the way that I teach. It's a very okay. unique and, and particular way that I teach. So how and, do um, you teach? Because I know you're big on foundations and yeah. Um, I found that well, I, after you know, I did my schooling in Sheridan, mm-hmm. and one of the things that I learned from Sheridan that I still have to me that I retained was program development. Okay. So I I got an A in that class. You know, I was, <laughs> Yay, I did. Congrats. You know, it was the class. Thanks. I was I was the class that everyone was afraid of. You know. Okay. <laughs> We're like, oh my gosh, you know, strategic planning and all kinds of things that we had no idea at the time. Mm-hmm. And um, you know, I I just I took the the format mm-hmm. and I. Uh, I applied it with my interest and I found that the application of my interest and the result uh, was was fostering and, and like great things. So I ended up going to York University mm-hmm. and I studied uh, fine arts and cultural studies and where I was able to uh, refine more of my methodology in, in regards to um, building and, and uh, um, catering to people's own creativity and, and okay. finding ways to present what they're doing and their own mm. ideas in very um, efficient ways and uh, to think outside the box and, and um, to just enjoy what they're doing and okay. always and put meaning behind it. So that's in a nutshell, uh, the mm. way that I teach and it's inclusive of people, different skill levels. Uh, yeah. I teach at City Dance Corps every week uh, okay, on yeah, Thursdays nice. and Mondays. City Dance Corps is on uh, 489 Queen Street West. So that's a dance studio in Toronto. That's right. Yeah. And uh, you can check that out. Um, that's just one example. Mm-hmm. Or in Mississauga, different community centers and or the programs that I'm running in Mississauga through Unity Charity yeah. um, called The Hub. And um, I find that and th- the manner in, in which I've been able to teach and, and the methods that I've been using have seen a lot of people, um, you know, grow and develop from them in, in, mm. u- in unique ways. Like one example is uh, Anthony Putt or Ills, B-Boy Ills. He was the Red Bull BC1 winner of Canada. Um, and sponsored by Puma and, and doing ads for sport check and whatnot. He's traveling around nice. the world. A shout out to you, Ills. Much yeah. love, my brother. Um, you know, guys like him took that knowledge and uh, ran with it and, 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 you know, acquired his own experiences along the way. Mm-hmm. But it allowed him to be a very uh, unique artist in terms of his presentation. And that, that was a good foundation for him to eventually develop his own things afterwards, you know. And guys like Burn and, 
and uh you know there's i, I don't want to say too many names because i'm going to exclude somebody but yeah. like my whole crew my whole clique like all okay. of them um so you give them the tools yes. to be the best versions of themselves simply put okay simply put and those tools are an amalgamation of a lot of knowledge that I've acquired from everybody that I've come across yeah. uh, with blessing, of course. So a lot of my mentors and the people that I look up to and the places yeah. that I've traveled, whether the local pioneers, Canadian uh, pioneers in terms of through the, through the arts mm -hmm. or international ones, I've um, done my best to ask, try to ask the right questions yeah. and integrate um, the deeper understanding or the base understanding of, of what it is that they're sharing. And then I mix it with my own methodology and flip it. And I always do my best to give credit mm -hmm. where I've acquired particular information. I think it's really important to yeah. share the bloodline and the word of the word of mouth. And um, yeah. going a little bit back in terms of reference, that's how our, our indigenous ancestors um, and our communities around the world, mm -hmm. you know, that's their original way of storytelling, is sharing the knowledge um, mm -hmm. through word of mouth um, for the written. But uh, written comes into that. And then of course, if we're talking about dance, there's the physical and you, you got to do it, you know, no matter what you know, it's how you apply it. Yeah. You know? So. Yeah, because, yeah. Like you my have boy, a, Paul One says, you know, <laughs> yeah. You have a lot of experience from yeah, different programs, different people around the world. Mm -hmm. Do you help other teachers as well? Like. I do. Like. Yeah. Help them with like ideas and how to better teach mm -hmm. either their students or help their communities. I've. Uh, I, I do whenever I can, mm -hmm. and in any context or situation that I'm in, I find that yeah. I'm that kind. I'm one of those people that can uh, snap out ideas very, very easily, and uh, think objectively in that mm -hmm. regard, and, and think open-mindedly and not non-judgmentally, because yeah. I want. Uh, I'm thinking about the that will come in the overall goal, and I don't believe any idea is a dumb idea. I, yeah. I really love to be inclusive of people. I like connecting people and working with people. Mm -hmm. So, I, as an art educator, I'm often. Uh, whether I'm in the setting of working in schools or working as a consultant, mm -hmm. um, I'm always in a situation where I'm bringing in a different lens to the situation. Okay. And uh, that's nice. that's working that's worked often uh, and benefited the people that I'm working with, and also for myself because I get to grow as an art practitioner and I get to grow as a as a teacher and as a good student as well. So yeah. I'm always in these types of situations. Um, Yes, most definitely. And in the case of working in Japan with uh, mm -hmm. Storytime Japan, which is one, another one of my, my crews, um, you know, like uh, uh, Nagisa, Okano, and, and Tiny Touch, and, and, um, and Atsushi, Ach, uh, we've all come together to create a community initiative, a volunteer-based initiative in Japan, modeling oh, okay. some of the things that I have been doing in Mississauga. So, you know, Storytime has, has run events for the community, mm -hmm. like uh, specifically dance events, art events, um, hosting open sessions for youth to learn breaking and practice hip hop arts and, oh, very cool. and connect it with their own traditional uh, arts as well. So I, I working in collaboration with them, I've been in a situation where I, I've been in Japan about five times now and, um, you know, learning more about the Japanese culture and the manner and the way in which they they share and knowledge and yeah. teach and learn is, is and just produce things in general is so different than the way that we mm -hmm. do things here and um it, it's been an awesome like learning experience for me too because yeah. i try to bring that over here in canada uh you know just borrow some of those things that i feel work uh, mm -hmm. and then i tr try to share it so i'm just kind of a collector you know i'm going around and collecting yeah. a bunch of different things and putting them together that's yeah. so interesting. Yeah, and it's so cool that you're doing work like not only locally and in your in your community of where you live or the cities around your country, but you're mm -hmm. doing it also internationally. That's, that's yeah, pretty cool. It's a trip. I mean, I never imagined it would happen, but it happened. Yeah. I think one of the funniest things that happened to me was it was the second time we did the story time event, mm -hmm. second annual story time event, and I was with uh, one of the members of Kifa. Kifa is uh, um, an organization that was set um, to to be in partnership with Mississauga. So Mississauga okay. and Korea City, Japan, which is in Aichi Prefecture, mm -hmm. they've been twin cities for many many years. Okay. So um, we've connect. I've connected with the MFA, the Mississauga Friendship Association, with Kifa, um, okay. but almost separate of what they're doing, and and still at the same time. Um, encouraging what they're doing in terms of the partnership. Okay. So Storytime Initiative uh, was invited by Kifa to a tea ceremony where the mayor of Mississauga, the new mayor of Mississauga, Bonnie Crombie, was at. 
and I remember showing up to this tea ceremony and uh, Mayor Crombie's like, who are you? <laughs> what are you doing here? And I'm like, hey, I'm from Mississauga. Like, I'm an artist. We're doing stuff here too. And she's like, what the <laughs> heck is going on? Yeah. And like, I've, I've been in situations like this that are kind of, you know, uh, really unique and really interesting. Um, and at the same time, I've, I've, you know, been able to um, just m- be in places and positions that I never would have even imagined. Uh, meeting people that I never even would have imagined. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. So that's so cool. Like, I wish you could like, I don't know, share some of even like half of what you know in this podcast. But that's like impossible. impossible. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm working on something for the future yeah. where people could get a more in depth look into uh, my experiences. It's yeah. Been, you know, uh, I I may or may not have just mentioned. I, it's been 20 years. I've been dancing for 20 years. Been in the hip hop community for 20 years. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot to share. And, and, yeah, for sure. And, you know, lots to talk about. Yeah. So, um, but yes, so, you know, Storytime has been a great initiative, uh, you know, being part of them, mm-hmm. I've been learning a lot, being part of, you know, 20th Century B-Boys has been incredible because the skill level in Korea is just really high. And well, yeah, yeah, they're it's really good. Yeah. Most definitely, not only really good, but they're so courteous and so kind. Okay. And I felt like a lot of love uh, from them. And I got put down with the crew with uh, uh, one of my other homies from Montreal, Vicious, who's part of Sweet Technique and Boogie Brats. So we got put down okay. at the same time. So it's been an, an awesome ride to just, you know, see the way people practice and the way yeah. their mentality rolls. And, and uh, it, it's definitely stuff that makes you, it, it humbles you out, you mm-hmm. know, as, as you move on. So, um, yeah, there's that. Uh, Conscious Souls, I got to give a shout out to them. That was a collective that was started in the early 2000s by my boy mm-hmm. Jester from Albino Zebras. And he represents Supernaturals as well. And uh, there's a lot of guys from all across Toronto, like Albino Zebras, guys from Maximum Efficiency, uh, GI members as well. And we all com- came together um, mm-hmm. as a group of friends, particular mentality of just, you know, um, letting yourself be free in your dance, you know, being uh, being conscious with your soul, you know, with your, yeah. your shoe soul. Oh. You, know, your, <laughs> you know, it's like allowing your... With your soul and your shoe soul. Yeah, it's, yeah. you know, you're like you're... Um, you just get down. You just love to get down. Yeah. Uh, one unit tribe, which was mentioned, was a collaboration uh, and a connection, like a pact more, like a brotherhood mm-hmm. pact between MEC, uh, Soul Step, and Ground Illusions uh, in the late 90s. Mm-hmm. We were the kind of guys that, when we were growing up, we saw a lot of the older guys in our community feud a lot. They're feuding because intellectual oh, property okay. is, is really important in hip-hop, and there's, sometimes people don't always honor that. And unfortunately, you know, a lot of... Uh, you know it's life human condition people are people sometimes there's negativity out there and there's mm-hmm. like harsh feelings and, and whatnot and anyways so you one unit tribe was like okay we're all growing up together let's just be cool with each other That's let's find cool. a way to even though you're part of different crews, crews you yeah. can have friendly rivalry we'll battle nice. each other whatnot we'll, we'll try to push each other but like let's mm-hmm. have like brotherhood and, and let's be respectful of each other that's good so you know we try to be an example of that and, and do that right um, Canadian Floor Masters, Canada's oldest b-boy crew, um, considered like an honorary member by mm-hmm. Buddha, you know, so nice. I, I, I represent that name as much as I can when I can. Um, and I feel as though a lot of people know me as a, as a b-boy, as a breaker, mm-hmm. and, and more if they know the, the type of work that I do as a community development worker, as an artist educator, um, but I'm also into writing. I love writing. Oh, I've been, nice. I've been writing for 20 years. I'm a poet. So, okay. You know, and, and I've been a visual artist since I was a kid as well. So oh, okay. uh, moving forward, uh, I'm looking into those avenues a lot more and how I can express not only my stories and my lens, but yeah. um, just overall um, the whole the whole world that is rubbed off on me. How can I you know, yeah. reproject that in a way that honors the people that are around me? write yeah. a book yeah 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 i was kind of <laughs> i'm kind of alluding to that but yeah. i'm starting to get to the point where you know sometimes when you you, you talk about i'm gonna do this and i'm gonna mm-hmm. do that, trying to get away from that it's more like i am doing this i am doing that yeah and you're on the method of of like you know moving towards that if you yeah you know, the way you speak about it is how it's manifesting in your life i so, like that yeah. yeah instead of yeah hoping for things yes. putting things in the present instead of the future right. when you talk about it yeah even sometimes like if you're if you journal things you're grateful for you can mm-hmm. if you're like hoping i don't know you get a new promotion or whatever you can yeah. be like i'm grateful for this new promotion like put it in the present tense yes 
it's interesting oh. stuff like that so, you know i'm experiencing a promotion every day of my life because i'm yeah. always put in situations where i have to take on more responsibility or mm-hmm. i'm always put in situations where i have to draw upon my previous experience or i'm put in situations where i'm always having to elevate and learn so mm-hmm. that in itself is a promotion you know or sometimes you know we're, we're asking for things out and we put it out in the ether and mm-hmm. you know our frequency the frequency of our thoughts are, are starting to you know um consume the world and the environment around us and a lot of times we forget that because there's so much distraction out there and you know um it's 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 sometimes a challenge to to bring harmony in in yeah. terms of you know like what i've been doing what i've done in the past who i am now where am i gonna go um who is around me who am i keeping around me who do i want around me what kind of things do i want to do and there's this constant yeah. like you know massaging of that is this constant working of that and and finding harmony i think is something that we're all trying to work towards i know it's something that i'm trying to work on on a daily sometimes i feel miserably and sometimes i'm doing all right you know so so yeah i mean i have a few ideas that I'll, i'm i'm working on actively mm-hmm. um but stay tuned yeah <laughs> you know i don't want to give everything away yeah. otherwise it's uh you know it's like a commercial or a preview <laughs> that you see the whole movie yeah <laughs> oh know? my gosh yeah i don't like those <laughs> you know like yeah it's, uh, if there's a movie i want to see in general i just want to know nothing about it yeah i saw interstellar like that and it blew my mind mm-hmm. uh, so much so that i saw that film i think three times in the theaters oh, you know? okay yeah but you know the irony of the thing is that and i'm kind of making this reference to to a commercial and, mm-hmm. and maybe being careful not to overstate what it is that you mm-hmm. intend to do in the future there's a difference between you know working on on your goals actively mm-hmm. and and humbly and like you know behind closed doors and with you the people that are you you're with uh and then kind of coming out with it then promoting it out and putting it out there like you're going to do it and there's all kinds of expectation uh, i've been learning a lot about yeah. um understanding what expectation means in, in my life personally uh, okay. whether it's expectations that are put on myself or mm-hmm. if I'm, I'm trying to understand and overstand uh, the idea of having expectations put on other people you know so um why i find the irony in that reference or that analogy with commercials is that um the first time i did anything like public speaking i find myself doing a lot more public speaking these days was mm-hmm. when i was in elementary school and i i did a public speech okay um, for my whole school okay. and uh, I, I was able it was decent enough that mm-hmm. you know it was good enough that it was able to put me in front of like 500 youth and talk about commercials okay and i spoke about uh you know one of the main things was like i don't really like commercials because they give away the whole movie and i did like a skit where i imitated jim carrey's you know ace ventura and i like did it word for word and people were just like dying gut laughing you know and it's just an example it's like i want to leave an element of surprise you know and and that's also a b-boy mentality a breaking mentality is if i'm in the cypher i'm doing what i'm doing and i'm moving how i'm moving but uh if you you know as a as a breaker as a b-boy or a Mm b-girl you're gonna go in and you want to leave a little bit like some aces up your sleeve yeah you don't want to reveal everything you don't want to reveal everything you want to keep some for the next rounds yeah yeah Yeah. you know and and kind of speaking on that i feel the way i've been able to cultivate this dance and i feel really Mm -hmm. fortunate to grow up in the generation that i've grown up with uh, with breaking is because i've been able to acquire an understanding that allows me to to actively put hip-hop in my life you know mm-hmm. and in a way that i in the way that i do things in the way that i think about things and when i say things i don't mean to be so abstract but uh literally anything you know the yeah. way that i write is is like a is a, a breaker in perspective the way that i approach um art and ideas the way i approach thinking systematically the way i approach organizational opportunities or mm-hmm. whatnot i approach it uh, as a breaker and what that means is i'm opening i'm building and i'm sharing and i'm trying to dissect and keep things fresh and um, be unique and, and i want to do something that's gonna uh, last a long time that's gonna be a full step saga you know it's gonna be um, like a never-ending story so you're part of all these different organizations you're doing so much how do you like stay organized how do you ground yourself how do you keep everything in perspective because if you're doing a lot it's like a lot for your brain you know (laughs) you should ask my partner she'll tell you (laughs) this guy's crazy when he's alone he goes off yeah you know it helps when you have people that are you know 
around you that really love you yeah and, and do their best to understand you mm-hmm. and i think i want to give a shout out to you know my family and friends you know who you are who really try your best to understand me and accept me for who i am um for better or for worse mm-hmm. and they know i'm the kind of person that does that for them as much as i can so um that's one of the most important things is having people around you that can ground you mm-hmm. and at the same time those are the same people who can can lift you up and encourage you and, and they genuinely show you their support yeah and uh they they got a lot of actual love for you so if it wasn't for all those people all my friends and my crew or you know my partner or my mm-hmm. family you know um i don't know if i could still be doing this stuff because they've supported me on so many levels um it's bananas right so That's there's good. that and also you know i try i try my best to meditate um okay. I, have, I have faith you know what i'm saying there, there's a god out there and in there and everywhere mm-hmm. and you know i try to reach out to to him or her or it you know mm-hmm. like as much as i can deeply um i go intrinsically and uh you know those things help you know writing helps a lot playing music helps a lot you know mm-hmm. i love guitar i kind of double dabble on that oh, you know nice. you know I'm, I'm into comic books i'm an avid comic reader you know yeah i remember that <laughs> yeah shout out to deadly mike deadly del mundo one of my big ins- inspirations as a b-boy but he's also a marvel illustrator oh, go, go pick up books by deadly mike you could find them they're on on the shelves in any bookstore uh, cool. look for his name deadly del mundo and support him he's an ill writer or even jamal campbell coming out of mississauga he's writing for dc i believe right now so there's a lot of That's local sick. artists out there yeah it's really sick i've it's yeah. i never would have thought as a, as a breaker as a dancer i've been able to be in touch with so many different people in this world um on so many different levels you know and yeah. you know i found myself t- over two years ago on stage in vancouver in front of like over three thousand people doing a tedx talk Oh, nice. Yeah, it was incredible. Simply for the fact that I'm like, how did I get here? (laughs) I'm standing here and I'm doing this thing. (laughs) And I'm alongside some of the most brilliant minds around. And and they're looking at me in a respectful manner. And so cool. That's what I always wanted, especially when it came down to doing community outreach and development through Sheridan. I was like, man, I want to have hip hop and and break in. And and I want people to like look at what we do Mm -hmm. um, just as important, you know? when you're on stage you need the engineer you need someone to like you know make everything work mm-hmm. but you also need the dancer to be there or the artist to be there and they should oh, be for get, sure yeah. they should be getting paid the same amount you know like look around you if you're listening look around you nothing you have would be around without art without an artistic mind or yeah, an art because mentality they have to create it right and creation is yeah. divine you know creating is divine so however you wish to look at that um, it's it's very powerful, right? And, and with great power comes great responsibility, <laughs> like Peter <laughs> like Parker Spider. says, you know? Yeah, straight yeah. up, you know? And there's a lot of times as human beings, you know, we're not perfect as people and we're going we're gonna to fall, we're going to make mistakes or we're going to make bad decisions or, you know, I think sometimes in the of wrong course. way. Of course, we're all human. That's so right. So we're going to make mistakes. Right. But I feel like if we allow ourselves to be um, cultivated by art, by culture, mm-hmm. it allows us to... Um, to build resilience in that way and to understand okay. ourselves in a deeper level you know uh, sometimes when i'm sharing knowledge with or teaching uh, youth how to break yeah. or even adults because i teach adults as well okay. right um oftentimes you know people sometimes feel uncomfortable looking like uncomfortable and have inhibitions which mm-hmm. is so natural right um but often I, I tell them, I said, don't be afraid of making mistakes making mistakes is important because with those mistakes you wouldn't be able to you know push forward and and understand where it is that you want to be now you have a bar that's set now Mm -hmm. you're starting to understand where you want to go where you do not want to go and without mistakes you wouldn't be human being at all you know it wouldn't work that way and the gratification of getting to where it is that you think you want to be Mm -hmm. um, it wouldn't feel as satisfying either so um, that's important you know Um, and it's all relevant i think it's all a big circle Mm -hmm. when you're finish it you just finish like a tedx talk for example yeah do you like are backstage and you like look back at your life and the point that brought you there or do you ever look back i do i do yeah. actually i kind of i look back so much it's like a fault of mine sometimes oh, okay. i'm really i'm a reflector and i reflect and to the point where it uh, almost sometimes consumes me to be transparent and honest okay. with you so i'm one of those people that really needs to um always think about the present and try my best to think about the present and also Mm -hmm. the future because the past i I dwell on that and and that's something that like you know 
I've been actively working on with that. But I think it's important to, you know, it's n- there's nothing wrong with looking at the past, especially if you could draw strength from it and reconcile with it and understand it and overstand yeah. it, like I mentioned earlier, right? So in the case of TEDx, before I did the talk, mm-hmm. you know, I'm in the backstage and we're in the, um, excuse, I can't remember the, the arena's name, but it's the one where the NHL plays. Okay. And um, That's the hockey league, yeah. Yes. And, uh, you know, the stage is set up for a quarter of that arena. And there's like, um, as I mentioned, mad people there. There's okay. over 3,000 people there. And I'm backstage and I'm preparing for my talk, which mm-hmm. has me dancing at the same time. You know, oh, in some capacity, okay. like I'm, I'm, you know, I'm speaking and I'm dancing, I'm speaking and I'm dancing. And, and you know, t- TEDx was just like, can you speak and dance at the same time? <laughs> and I'm like, uh, yeah, sure. I'm like, oh, my God, I got to like train for this one, you know? Yeah. And uh, so yeah, that's a lot of breath, because when you're dancing, normally you're not speaking at the same time. So. It's a lot of energy. Yeah. You know, I mean, um, the hardest thing is after you get up from dancing, mm-hmm. there's the oxygen and moving through your body starting is getting depleted right so yeah. like it's hard for you to think you know mm-hmm. if the oxygen is not in your brain so it's like you, you know you see anyone who's a professional performer you know whether on, on stage like mm-hmm. you know like michael jackson for example right yeah. is training your body getting ready for oh know, my god yeah keeping active but in that state i'm thinking back to the past of what got me there i'm like mm-hmm. i'm hearing the roar of the crowd the speaker before me mm-hmm. i'm getting like really excited and nervous but i'm also understanding that that nervous feeling is your mind preparing your body for something okay so this is how i acknowledge it and the way i view it personally yeah. it's just my opinion so and it's something that i share with younger people like i'm mm-hmm. so nervous to perform i'm so nervous at this yeah. i'm like i feel you i'm like that's good though that nervousness is just excitement okay. so let's harness that energy of excitement and like push it in the way that you wish to push it and impo- like you have power now let's use that right mm-hmm. so i'm trying to do that to myself i'm trying to like you know walk the walk right yeah and uh, i think what helped was the host of tedx in that that particular event had sent a questionnaire before any of the speakers were there in vancouver okay and it was four questions that were very deep that i literally had to take like four days to think about and um those questions and the answer to those questions or or one of them that was chosen Mm -hmm. was not it's not on the recording. Like if you go on YouTube and you look up Frost Flow, a B-Boy process, mm-hmm. you'll find my TEDx talk. But you won't see this pre-question and answer that was asked to the audience. That's reserved for the people who bought the ticket that were there. Oh, okay. And the question that I that resonated with and it was answered by me uh, was, name one moment in your life that you, and I'm asking the, the listener right now, name mm-hmm. one moment in your life where someone had a conversation with you and it was like a paradigm shift. It changed the way that you look at yourself and life right after that completely, you know? And how does that reflect in the way that you are? And I had to think about that very deeply for a few days. And then my answer was, you know, one day I was chilling, you know, with my old neighborhood friends or acquaintances or people that I thought were friends. And, and, and my, you know, my big brother who'd passed away, my homie. And, uh, you know, we're causing trouble that night. We're just, mm-hmm. look, we're kids looking for ish to do and, mm-hmm. uh, You know, we're just wasting time and whatever. And my father's driving around at night just looking for me at one in the morning, like things that Portuguese parents do or any parent who cares Mm -hmm. what their kid does, you know. And uh, finally, I get home. And the next day, I'm being driven to Brampton with my parents to my aunt's house. And my parents are furious with me. They're so upset and they're so worried. And they're like, you know, we know what you're doing. We know that you're out there and you're kicking it with these kids Mm -hmm. that you shouldn't be kicking it with. And why are you doing that? And my answer to them was, I don't know. I just want to fit in. And my parents were like, no, 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 you don't want to fit in. The only person you need to fit in with is yourself. And I took it in. Okay. And I was like, I like that. Yeah. And I did too. And it really just kind of like made me sit back in my seat and consider that. And that was the only thing that I can think about. And imagine there's over 3,000 people, mm-hmm. as, as the listener already knows at this point, there's a lot of people there. And this is how I'm being introduced onto stage. And before I even went onto the stage, I was with my two of my friends, uh, uh, Jackie, JK47, and Mark Siller, mm-hmm. who are uh, Vancouver dancers. And you know, during an intermission, we were kicking it on stage. Mm-hmm. And there's a little red carpet on the stage, and I'm literally lying down on it, and we're sitting on it and telling, sharing poetry with each other, and getting really comfortable on stage. Okay. And they they helped me do my performance of my te- TEDx talk. So by the time I returned to the stage, I felt like I was in my own living room. 
Okay, and that's th- cool. It's a good tip for anyone who's doing speaking in front of a lot yeah. of people. Get acquainted with your environment and what you're what you're about to do. Because okay. you know the rehearsals I had before that talk were terrible. You know, like yeah. I got there super tired and yeah. you know, like just forgetting everything. And I'm thinking, oh my god, I'm speaking in front of these people. I don't even know what the heck's going on. But then when I delivered my TED my TED talk. Mm-hmm. You know, I'll, I came in with this introduction that was a real reflection of, you know, you know, what kind of person that I've become, you know, yeah. for for everything that I am, like for better, for worse. Right. I'm there in that space. And, um, you know, and I have support behind me as people who are showing a lot of love and sacrifice their time to do this with me. And uh, I was able to deliver my 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 talk. Mm-hmm. And uh, I found that my prompter wasn't working, the clicker. So I didn't have my script at all. Oh. And so if you watch the, the TEDx talk, mm-hmm. I'm just doing straight off the top of my dome. And okay. thankfully I had memorized it. Okay. And um, you know, I delivered as much as I can. I mean, there was a couple parts that are cut in the edited version that pe- some people don't. This is the in- this is, you're getting the, the backstage story. Yeah. You're getting the inside scoop right now. There's a couple of parts that were cut from mm-hmm. my talk like the punchline of, you know, Frosty Freeze being kind of like, you know, telling me, you know, wow, brother, you got to represent, you know, and I was mm-hmm. so like intimidated by the fact that, you know, he was talking to me and you'll learn more about it when you watch the talk. But the basis of the idea was I'm talking about my my history of mm-hmm. how, what inspired me in, in this culture and what gave me my identity in this culture. And the fact that I was so impressed that there are people out there who have a high position and whatever, but they're still humble people and they're still encouraging. And yeah. a, a little encouragement goes a long way. So that was like the main point. And, uh, you know, my parents really encouraged me at that, that moment. And I was, I, I grew the autonomy to just be like, you know what? I don't mind just being myself. I don't have to fit in with anybody, you know, mm-hmm. and I got to fit in with me. And anyone who has the same frequency I do, we're going to share that. Uh, you know, whether I'm in a space of like I'm in a bad vibe or I'm like in a good like good part of my life or a bad part of my life, mm-hmm. you're going to meet people who compliment you in that time. There's harmony with everyone that you meet. So um, that's kind of that experience for sure. There's a lot of reflection before and even yeah. after. And what's trippy is that after I finished that talk, you know, I had some people come up to me that I had been building before I did the talk who mm-hmm. never even had heard my talk before. Okay. And they said, I knew it was going to be good. You know, there's a lot of people that were doubting you. Like, oh, yeah, why is that? Oh, because you're the break dancer. You're the breaker. Mm-hmm. It's funny how people view hip hop culture and people involved in street culture, uh, firstly, oh, in a like negative way. Is bad right thing. away, right? Yeah. There's a stigmatization, there's a preconceived notion. But then I ended up doing my thing, and it got yeah. such a huge response afterwards that, you know, uh, you know, it was just a great experience for me after, and I got opportunities after that. And but then, people you know, don't, they, I think they misunderstand hip hop culture. They think yeah. it's all like guns and stuff, but like the art of hip hop and all the elements is a very positive thing. Yeah. I think. Yeah. I think that if you, like hip hop is folk culture, mm-hmm. it's it's culture and and movement and art practice um, that is reflective of what's going on. It's contemporary. It's what's happening now. So all forms of hip hop art expression. So mm-hmm. right away, when you say hip hop, people think it's a genre of music. I disagree. I don't think it's a genre of music. I think like b-boying, graffiti, DJing. turntablism, MCing. Yes, like that's yeah. knowledge and having knowledge unifying all those things. It's a it's a culture and it's manifested through these art art uh, mm-hmm. platforms, you know. And the roots, they're, they're African roots. They come from Africa and um, the traditional roots. And that stuff has been in existence for thousands of years so hip-hop has actually existed for thousands of years okay it just manifested in a particular way in the Mm -hmm. south bronx in the early 70s right um with a lot of culture there and if you're interested about some of that and how it manifested you know you should look up rubble kings rubble like i said broken down rubble kings and that's on netflix that's a good documentary and talks about the ghetto brothers and you know the savage skulls and black spades and the like, whole oh. you know like so uh, rubble kings rubble on kings Netflix. yeah you should check that out cool. you can learn a little bit about the beginnings of how hip hop like cr- was created and manifested in a form cuz hip hop is just a term you know it was a term that was yeah. given but the energy of rocking of doing it mm-hmm. has been in existence for a long time right and every culture has a drum you know and, okay you know so every culture has a way that they they zone and they go off and hip hop mm-hmm. is an accumulation of a lot of different practices and elements that is borrowed and sampled from everything mm-hmm. put into one you know and we we see that with hip hop music and the construction of hip hop music you know it's it's using whatever you can 
and taking it to another level, you know. And, and if you look at jazz, that's in the hierarchy of music. Jazz mm-hmm. is like at the top, and hip hop's like the new jazz, yeah. you know, and it has been the new jazz for a long time, you know. Um, so in any case, uh, people associate, you know, uh, hip hop music with things that are negative, but you know, hip hop is just speaking about what's going on around us, and hip hop MCs and and hip hop practitioners and artists are are sharing what it is that's going on. They were reflectors. Mm-hmm. So if you don't like hip hop you probably don't like what's going on in the world, you know, and if you like hip hop, you probably do like what's going on in the world, but there's something for everybody. Yeah, of course, not everyone has to like hip hop. Like my parents listen to classical music. (laughs) They're not gonna connect with hip hop, but yeah. And what's trippy is like a good hip hop artist loves classical music, loves all kinds of music. And that's what hip hop is. It's like taking, you know, the element from everything that makes you like, "Mm," gives you that grunt that makes you feel you know, representative of who you are. Mm-hmm. And that's something that, you know, you ha- you can have a hip hop mind without even being in hip hop culture. And that's my personal opinion. It's just yeah. the, the lens in which you view and the way that you approach things. And that's what hip hop is. So when I'm speaking in places like TEDx or when I'm speaking mm-hmm. in schools with youth or I'm speaking to people who are, you know, counselors or, you know, uh, you know, dignitaries or whatever, then that's the manner in which I'm, I'm sharing my, my personal experience with hip hop. You know, um, yeah. Yeah, and earlier you were saying when you meet very successful people, they're like, I find people who have achieved the most are so humble and like know themselves really well. Yeah, which is amazing. Yeah. Is there anyone that you've admired that you had the chance to meet and you were like, oh my god, you're so cool? Oh my gosh, <laughs> yeah. Jeez, that's a. Oh, that's a lot of them. That's I've met a lot of people. That's a big question. I have yeah. a couple of people I can think of right now, actually. Okay. Um. So there, there's so many people that I've met that are pretty well known. Um. That you know I've I've met them and they've either starstruck me, which you know like like Mark Hamill when I met Luke Skywalker slash oh. Joker, I was starstruck. I didn't know what to say. I felt like such an <laughs> idiot. And you know if I ever like if I had ever got a chance to meet him again or whatever, mm-hmm. I'd tell him, yo, thanks a lot for inspiring me. You really inspired me because you chose to play a Jedi Knight and the Jedi mm-hmm. Knight and that whole, like, uh, Star Wars saga inspired the way that I approach my breaking and everything okay. like that. Like, that's one example, you know, and mm-hmm. that in turn has supported a lot of people in a positive way, I think, in my opinion. But in terms of uh, people that I've met that uh, I've always wanted to meet and were super cool, Mr. Wiggles from Rocksteady Crew, Electro Boogaloo's, Mm-hmm. That man is such an inspiration on so many levels. Cool ass brother, and he's so knowledgeable and extremely humble for who he is, what he's contributed and whatnot. Such an awesome dude. Mm-hmm. And you know, I was seeing him in music videos. You know, everyone when people pop and they wave and they do tutting styles and stuff, that comes from Electric Boogaloo's, right? Yeah. And like, I mean, the way that he developed his style and what he does inspired a lot of people. But when I met him, he had no arrogance or or like pompous nature to him and he was just a cool dude and really open and friendly and he you know asked him a lot of questions and he took time to like really uh you know answer them nice. well right uh, another guy that i met a torontonian uh socrates okay everyone should know socrates if you're into hip-hop yeah uh, i met him outside ryerson he i don't know if he remembers this at all he probably won't but i remember meeting this guy and he was just a cool dude man like a down-to-earth guy and you know, mad fresh, you know, guys like Chaos, for example, I met him outside of, uh, you know, a mutual friend's shop, Nomad, you know, and uh, he was a very kind dude, you know, there's a lot of people that I met that are super cool, and there's dudes that I don't need to mention that I met them, and <laughs> they, they trip out because they're talking to them, they don't know who I am, and, uh, and rightfully so, they don't, they don't need to know who I am, but when I speak to them, I'm speaking to them as an equal almost, you know, like, mm-hmm. I've been doing my art for 20 years, and you you may not know that, and that's okay, but don't talk to me like I'm way less than you, right? Or no, get upset when I'm talking to you like I have something I can relate with you with. And at the same time, I also understand because when you're at a certain level and there's a lot of people trying to reach out to you all the time and try to get in your oh. personal space and you got to be guarded, man. So I get that too. So it's important, yeah. I think, in life to have a perspective of all sides of the story mm-hmm. or the coin. You know, you got to try your best to understand and then overstand, you know. Mm-hmm. So that's what I think. And, uh, yeah, there's a lot okay. of people I'm going to meet. And, uh, you know, in Japan, we say, Yoroshiku, Yoroshiku nagashimasu. And that means, like, you know, be nice to me, like, coming with respect. Oh, each one, teach one. In Japan, one. they have so much respect. 
Yeah, like, you know, it's like a very in terms of formalities, yeah, yeah and, and Korea as well. Like, you know, I'm I got put down on my crew. I'm the oldest member of my crew, and I got put down over there. So they pour my drink first, you know. Oh. <laughs> All the Koreans know what I mean, you know. So yeah, yeah. Shout out to my man Matt Kang, representing in Forbes, working for Forbes. Matt Kang, much love, Ground Illusions crew. Cool. My Korean brother. So you've been part of so many organizations. Mm -hmm. You've done all these workshops, drop-ins, mm -hmm. classes, everything. Mm -hmm. I'm sure there are so many like beautiful moments in your head. Do you want to share any of those very powerful moments with us or mm. or mm -hmm. or aha moments where you like realized something? There was there was one time uh, for some reason like I try to go on instinct and, okay. the f and the first thing that comes to my head often mm -hmm. like I, I try to ride on that and the first one I can remember was my my first initial trip it was in February I think it was February 12th or 13th okay uh, 2007 your trip to where to so. um, Nunavut in, okay. in Pangtung and in, in Blueprint for Life sorry if I'm getting ahead of myself yeah. but I, w I was in the Arctic and this is the final show for Blueprint for Life. We're there. We worked with the youth the whole week. We worked with like 100, 100 youth at mm -hmm. the same time. And in the process of like working with these youth, there was two boys that got in a, a fight, a scuffle. And I remember okay. I went for the went to a washroom break mm -hmm. and I didn't realize what was going on. When I came back, these two boys were sitting down in the gym floor, kind of close to each other, but not really. And... uh you know, we're at the point where we have to work with these kids and help them make routines for the battle. I think okay. it was on the Wednesday or whatever. So I'm like, yo, you, you, get up, come together. And okay. they looked at each other like, oh my God, I gotta work with you. And I have, I'm like completely ignorant to what will hap what happened with them when I was in the washroom, you oh, know? Oh, no. But I'm working with these guys and mm -hmm. I helped them build some routines. And, you know, I shared some of my crew routines with them mm -hmm. and, and, you know, helped them create some stuff of their own together. And they just killed the routine so hard. Like, they put their differences aside. Okay. And they are just so excited about learning some stuff that, you know, maybe the other youth weren't really doing. And it was pretty yeah. in-depth and technical stuff I was getting to do. Like, really con okay. like contact-based and conceptual and really fresh, you know. And uh, when they presented, mm -hmm. they just, like, destroyed those routines in the best way possible like okay. they killed it so good and like they just performed really really well mm -hmm. and they were so happy with themselves and they had such a good rapport that they had built and you know at one point um you know before that final presentation you know one of the crew members in my in my team said yo you know those guys got into a scrap like a straight fist fight for like you know, like a quick one it wasn't a big yeah. brawl but it was like a obvious problem right mm -hmm. And it was really awesome that you got them to kind of come together. I said, well, I didn't really know, <laughs> first of all. But at the same time, I could tell that there was some interesting energy with them, right? Mm -hmm. I'm a fairly, uh, like, empathic, intuitive person, I believe. Mm -hmm. So I noticed there was something. But we were just so focused on the goal and what we were doing. And um, it's interesting. I think that reflects in a, a lot of different situations where throughout my teaching and whatnot, a lot of aha moments where, like, I put my expectations away. And, you know, you can't judge a book by its cover. Okay, yeah. You know, and you got to really allow people to get the opportunity to shine and show you what's really going on. Because people come with a whole, like, history of complexities, you know, complex trauma or what or whatnot, like everything in general, everyone, yeah. right? You got something with them or through them. And uh, that's been my experience a lot, has been... In situations where I don't know what you're going through exactly. Maybe yeah. there's something under the surface. But we're unpacking a lot when I'm working with you. And as we're unpacking it, mm -hmm. I'm starting to really see who you are. Okay. And at the same time, you're starting to really see who you are. Yeah. And you're really starting. I'm really starting to help you construct who you want to be. And okay. you are constructing who you want to be while you're doing it. And it's a mix of both. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and it, it works both ways. You know, I'm seeing that manifest in front of me. And then it re helps me reflect on myself as well, you know, mm -hmm. and um, that's that's just one example. You know, there's a lot of different examples, but that's one to, to digest, okay. you know, and uh, yeah, I just didn't know that these guys had something. I could tell there was something weird, but mm -hmm. I was so impressed by the fact that they were willing to work together. And I, I realized that there there needed to be something that was going to push them. 
mm-hmm. so take it to another level you know I've, I've been in situations where working in the young offender center it's like a movie man like straight up i yeah? feel like i'm watching oh. a feature-length film like the okay. end because you see the process of these kids fronting like with their guard up and just being like yeah whoa what is this whatever whatever and then by mm-hmm. the end they're smiling and they're acting like kids again and and performing like incredible things in five days maybe you know what that's a good thing to put out in the universe maybe someone could make a movie about that about like i don't know who who (laughs) knows as at this point anything is possible (laughs) yeah that'd be sick you know what let's put that out there for any directors who are interested of like i don't know that i'm available and I know a lot of other people were available too. You know yeah, I mean? so. the story of like the development, and that's like a very positive thing, like mm-hmm. through art and hip hop, helping yeah. people go through their problems. You could go through the yeah. program in the movie, and yeah. then at the end, like they're transformed and based yeah, on a perhaps. true story. Yeah, yeah, totally. It's it's possibility. Who knows what can happen? Yeah. And I mean, I was when I say that, I genuinely mean it. And when mm-hmm. I talk to to, to people. And I look at them straight up and I try to genuinely say, like, you know, you can go anywhere. You can do anything you really want. You uh, can. Y- you know, you yeah. just, it's not even a just. It's, you have to believe and you have to know. We have to know. We have yeah. to believe. And, you know, I'm the same type of person, even though I'm saying that to other people. I got to look in the mirror and I got to convince myself every day of that as well, just like everybody else, you know, because, you know, life is like that, you know. It's not that easy. And some people just have it. They got a knack for it and they were either raise their particular way they have it in their dna or whatever and they push it but you know uh, people like me i kind of grew up where there was a lot of doubt around me about what i could do who i am and i wasn't you know i wasn't the best at school i wasn't the first picked on the soccer team you know what i'm saying i was the last one no one ever imagined that i would like you know uh, become a b-boy or win Mm -hmm. be like a national champion twice and have my students be international champions and do all the things that i've i've done right yeah you know i never even imagined it as well but it happened and you know and to the people who doubt and hate yo man yo thanks a lot for the motivation (laughs) straight up (laughs) you know i was having a conversation about this yesterday actually that of course some people are are raised with having more self-esteem because they have parents who or their environment is very supportive giving them encouragement constantly yeah yeah But if you're not raised in that environment, our brain is continuously learning new things and changing and we Mm -hmm. can totally give ourselves that. We have to work a little bit or be be more conscious of it. But we can totally give ourselves that and say like, I can do it. I can do anything I want. And like talking to yourself every day or like Mm -hmm. writing it down, looking in the mirror, pumping yourself up. It's healthy. Oh my God. Yeah, you can... You can totally rewire the way you think and then achieve Mm -hmm. insane amount of things. Yeah. So that's great to keep in mind always. Yeah. You know, like uh, another one of my like B-boy mentors and and people I look up to, his name is Maurizio, uh, a.k.a. the next one from Seven Gems in Italy. And he's the kind of guy that, you know, in conversations with him, he would kind of say like, you know, you're trying to go for something. You're already you're already going there. You're already on your way to it. You're not okay. going to do it. Like you're already on the path to it. You know, it's it's a progressive mind state. It's a progressive way to think about things. You know, and um, I I really believe that in the practice of arts, and, and I'm mm-hmm. promoting and I'm advocating on on the behalf of practicing arts. And it doesn't mean that you got to be a professional artist. It yeah. means that you know what you do already, you do it with an art mind and with a, a progressive mind state. That's useful for you. And you know, it's important mm-hmm. to I guess have a student mind all the time for sure because i find always like a curious Mm. mind or childlike mind to just always willing to learn because then yeah yeah, you discover so many things and create new things and Mm -hmm. and you be happy yeah you're able to be happy you know like when you come into this world as a child you're gonna leave as a child too you know yeah and you know for those who you know follow scripture or whatnot you know um, you have to look at the world through the eyes of a child, right? So that's something to consider as well. What does that mean exactly with the type of innocence, with the type of open-mindedness? You mm-hmm. know, when you're a child, everything's exciting because it's your first experience of it. So you are you have wonderment and you're like yeah. in awe of everything. And uh, it's a challenge to have that the more experience in life 
that we go through. For sure, because e- all these yeah. things come in. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I feel really, I feel really um, passionate about this subject because it's it's stuff that I'm I'm often considering, and and you know everyone's got their fights they got to fight internally and things that mm-hmm. they deal with externally, and you know I find that you can go through accomplishments and and experience a lot of different stuff and feel good about yourself and you got to have your ego sometimes and you got to like feel good about yourself and have that pride you know but sometimes too much of anything is not good so you got too much pride it's not good for you you know you got too much ego it's not good for you you know too much of anything almost and i don't know if there's too much such thing as too much humility you know (laughs) the art and history could argue you know if that's a positive or negative thing but i think in the end having a good balance is important and um each one teach one you know for sure and having good people around you that remind you of things or yeah 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 and very like practice yeah very agree mm-hmm. how did you even get into meditation because that's such a like hmm. well abstract thing or i don't know i was born into a roman catholic family yeah so Oh, what Portuguese, that, in yeah. Portuguese and as normal and what that means is that I was going to church every Sunday mm-hmm. you know um, and in that experience it, you know the aspect of praying you know mm-hmm. like being in prayer is something that oh. was a normal type of thing mm-hmm. and and you know I found that as a child I would sin- try to sincerely be in prayer in, in some manner and always searching for something you know what I mean and you know, as an adult like I feel mm-hmm. like I still haven't found one looking for to quote you too. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Like sometimes in life, again, we get caught up in, in experiences and, and overall, but I found mm-hmm. that I've always been a kind of person who's a seeker. I've always been trying to find, you know, ways to meditate, whether it's trying to find a class at my community center back when I was like 17 years old because I was curious or trying to study Kriya Yoga when I was in 2007 and okay. like, you know, being a practitioner of that for a little while or you know visiting different countries and seeing the way that they worship the divine you know or going you know the times that i do go back to church um, Mm -hmm. feeling like i'm at home with the sense of of divinity and community in that respect you know i know that people around the world who live religious lifestyle they advocate the positivity in terms of their their the the outcome of their of their practice Mm -hmm. and there are people out there who look at religion as a very negative thing because of the war and all kinds of stuff going on like you can look at it in many different ways but i think spirituality in essence is part of our makeup it's part of our dna Uh, whether you're you know even if you're an atheist you got you believe in something man there's something in there right and you know i don't think anyone is really better than anyone else in that regard i think Mm -hmm. you know how you move and how you act and and how you'd constantly learning from those experiences and pushing towards something is such you start seeing and and creating your character and if you're the kind of person who doesn't feel good about themselves or the kind of person who is maybe feeling down about things that you've seen experienced or did you know like one of my i have a friend her name is emmy she's a she's an illustrator she said to me one time she goes yo every second is a second chance you know and okay and i think about that i'm just like yo that's true you know it's true Mm. you have you know you gotta just you know straight up led zeppelin you know it's never too late to change the road you're on <laughs> you know what i mean okay so you uh, have a wide range of musical influence oh yeah? definitely i if you're a hip-hop artist or just an artist period or artist practitioner you got to be open-minded to everything i love mm-hmm. everything as long as it's you know good quality and it's got heart and soul i love it you know mm-hmm. for sure nice it's funny i'm uh- like in a situation where like I don't know people who know me really closely like man you talked so much and then people who outside outside meet me only for a little bit and mm-hmm. they're like oh man you know you don't really say too much it's just, oh, it really? really depends on the circumstance you know oh and like there's some days where I just don't say anything I just try not to speak too much but in a case like this I'm being asked to speak so I'm gonna try my best to speak you know yeah, so, yeah. well yeah that's why we're here and for I sure. love to Word. hear you and I'm sure everyone listening loves to hear I hope what so you have to share. I hope so yeah yeah what have been some amazing um, experiences you've had traveling? Hmm. Um, there was one time while I was I did I was in a sweat lodge in Kasechewan. Okay. And uh, so explain to people what that is if they don't know what so, a sweat lodge is. So sweat lodge, um, it's ceremony, mm-hmm. um, Ishnabek ceremony, um, and it's a it's a 
it's a way of healing. So you go in there with your family or the community around you and a medicine man or shaman will perform ceremony. So just some of the things that I saw in that ceremony were the kinds of things that, you know, people wouldn't believe. And I don't know if I'm allowed to say, say this okay. on air or anything, but it's like I saw super normal abilities and display. And it like was like superhero type stuff. Well, you know, like, you know, when you go see the Shaolin monks and you're like, I can't believe that they just broke something with their hand that is seemingly oh. unrealistic to break or, okay. you, know, you know, seeing like a hot coal in your mouth and like you're not getting burnt, like stuff like that, you know? Oh, wow. And again, I- I'm kind of in this situation where I want to share particular things, yeah. but some things are sacred also in my experience. Yeah. So I don't want to expose too much, but mm-hmm. I could definitely see that was like one of them. You know what I mean? Whoa. Or uh, but like, did you talk to anyone about that after like uh, who, close who friends was there yeah 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 and people it was who like, were there well how how is that possible or all i can say is that it's agreed that there's some things in this world that you just can't explain <laughs> okay <laughs> you know damn, i'm so curious yeah, now but yeah. yeah i guess if you can't share it it's yeah okay, but. i mean like I'm so many people like, why'd you bring it up? You know, no. <laughs> <laughs> I just say, you know, I just put it this way, you know, keep your mind open because there's a lot of mystical things out there and a lot of, you know, real things out there that, uh, okay. again, you know, it can't really be explained, but the mind is very powerful and the spirit is even more powerful. So it's, you know, yeah, I've witnessed a lot of that. Um, that's crazy. I want to, okay, I want to see. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, incredible. That's, that's like one story for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I remember going to Sweden one time and I was doing a master class workshop with a B1 named Freeze okay. out there and Po1 out there. and So Freeze and Frost, that's <laughs> yeah. same world. Yeah. <laughs> Hilarious. And, uh, you know, my boy Foggy and, you know, uh, like everyone was out there, man. And, and we, w- we went inside this lodge that was like 200 years old and okay. you know, went into the space and you know, some places you, you go in and I mean, this might sound very esoteric and whatnot, mm-hmm. but you know, you can feel the presence of like spirit in there. Like that is very ancient. And okay. um, the experience of like having like a lot of youth follow us into that space and they're kicking it with them and like telling ghost stories and stuff. And then oh all of a sudden God. feeling like, Oh, we should probably leave right now. Kind of oh vibe. My God, no. And then, you know, I'm the last one to leave and I'm just like, thanks for letting us be in the space. And whatever was in there was just like, Oh, that's very kind. Now get out. I'm like, oh my God, you know? <laughs> what do you mean? How do you, I guess you just felt that yeah, feeling? Or? I'm the kind of person that like, yeah. you know, I just, maybe it's in my, my family mm-hmm. and my genetic makeup, but I experience things that, yeah. mean, you know, you know, that uh, not easy to explain. Okay. I, like I said, I'm a fairly empathic person, right? Yeah. Not, I mean, to creep people out like this, but that's just my own experience and i like to share stories yeah of my own experience right from my lens right mm-hmm. so it's that you know go, again going to japan experiencing the culture over there with my with my family and my friends over there you know just beautiful you know in korea um you know going to new york feeling like i was gonna see like superheroes flying around you know what why <laughs> from the movies i guess yeah, or? it's like you know when you go to different places in the world there's you know because we have media we have film we have yeah. story and you know your imagination go it gets out there right okay so then when i finally get to visit some places my imagination is still in the book you know so then i'm in these okay. places and i can understand the level of inspiration that people had in order to incorporate oh, okay. these very rare places in their stories you know um, I get really excited about, you know, seeing the world in that way and seeing people that way too, mm-hmm. you know. So you thought like Batman would be in New York City or something? Uh, Spider-Man, or? Like, oh, Spider-Man, like Peter okay, Parker. Okay. I was just like, whoa, where the Ninja Turtles at, man? Oh. I'm just like, this is a 35-year-old man, like thinking this way, but <laughs> I have a young heart, you know, and my but imagination is there. And it's fun. Yeah. yeah it's fun. It's to- nice, like adventure, like yeah, stories. It's- yeah, you know, I've Exciting. always I've always been the kind of person that uh, I always hope to discover mm-hmm. something that maybe people have never discovered before, you know, um, in the world, you know, just stumble upon something. And I guess in some okay. cases I have, you okay. know, like, like I remember like one time I remember um, I remember going up to Greece Fjord. That's like the furthest north you can be in Canada. Okay. Uh, without being part of the military or like in the national park so oh, okay uh, you know if you look at ellesmere island in canada that's the top island canada greece fjord is a community on the south coast 
and uh, I was there when it was 24 hour daylight and oh, uh, okay. I remember climbing a mountain named the Greenlander and then I was with m one of my boys Raul and we climbed up that mountain and you know there's no point in reference in the mountain there's no trees and none of that so yeah, oh, what looks wow. like a 15 minute walk is like a 45 minute walk you know and okay. I'm just walking with his brother and we're like you know pushing stones off the side of the mountain and seeing them like many like small little avalanches and smelling the flint and, and feeling naturally high off doing that and being excited and turn transforming into like children again Okay. you know despite all the things that we're seeing and hearing and life yeah. experience that we have and just kicking it up there all night, but it doesn't feel like nighttime because the sun is still up. Yeah. And uh, being in a, a peace of mind, the kind of peace of mind that, you know, is very seldom, is very seldomly that you can find that kind of peace of mind, that kind of quiet, you know, and yeah, I just appreciate going into, you know, different locations. I love being part of, you know, community, whether it's, you know, nationally or internationally, it, as part of that community and mm -hmm. experiencing the culture in depth. Um, rather than just going as a tourist, you know, and, yeah. um, and you know, I, I've experienced that in the Arctic. I've experienced that That's in Korea, so cool. in Japan, you know, and that uh, fills your soul. Yeah, it does. Or even yeah. in my, my parents are from the Azores and San Miguel, you know, and, mm -hmm. and going there and it's starting the times that I've gone there. It's starting to feel like home now as I get older and experiencing that in its fullest, but especially cultures w which are foreign to me that mm -hmm. I, I'm, I don't know anything about, you know, it just. I try to go in with an open mind, open heart, and I come yeah. in humbly in those spaces. So, yeah, I love that. I wouldn't That's have it any cool. other way. Oh, yeah. nice. I want to travel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you can, get out there. See yeah. if you can travel. Make an effort to do that. It's good yeah. for you. It's good for... Oh, yeah, you know. it's amazing. Because, like, there's much more to life than, like, the daily grind, for sure. And, like, oh, it just fills you in ways you can't explain. Yes. Yeah. Like, it's... And it's you're experiencing and living truly living life you yeah know? and it's hard it's hard sometimes you know we're like you know contained by our own survival mm -hmm. you know we're trying to survive here we got to work it's hard to get time yeah. off days off or you know and even my partner tells me she's like let's mm -hmm. go as places in ontario we can visit or just outside the yeah. city and you know check nature and hang out and sometimes i'm just like nah man i can't get out. i'm so busy and yeah. like sometimes the only time i can get out is when people fly me out to do work in which case then i'm just like all right now i'm gonna take t mm -hmm. some time to check this place out on a deeper level but i'm f even from i myself as traveled quote unquote as mm -hmm. I am which in comparison to some of the people I know I'm only <laughs> traveled kind of you know not as much as some people I know mm -hmm. but still I want to be able to get out even traveling to a local park yeah. you know it's where your mind is that's where your traveling yeah. is you know you, you, you go wherever you go things come with you so you can go to the ends of the earth but if you don't know how to be free in, in the heart and mind you're oh, not yeah, really traveling sure. right so yeah but some people try to travel or want to travel because they think it'll like oh i just want to get away escape my problems but mm. you have to deal with that internally and like yeah around you because like yourself will always be there <laughs> and everything in you will always be there yeah so you have to deal with that and yeah i'm sure you can relate yeah. if you're listening to this and if you can't reflect on that yeah it's true mm -hmm. okay so i'm gonna do some rapid fire questions okay. for you okay I'm going to just pull out my notes here. Okay. If you could have any superpower, what superpower would you have? Oh, my God. <laughs> I think about this all the time. Sometimes I want to teleport like Kurt Wagner. Sometimes I want to heal like Logan. You know, sometimes I want to have, you know, telekinesis like Jean Grey. Sometimes I want to have like telepathy <laughs> like Professor Xavier. But if you, know? you have to pick one. If I could pick one, it was it would be uh, something that is like, allows everyone around me to be empathetic with each other. Okay. You know? Yeah. Okay. Or like, you know, if I can put that out there and it allows people to heal, allows, you know, everyone around, we can all heal together and just like enjoy life and see how things are and, mm -hmm. and work out problems and stuff. Like that would be an awesome superpower to have, you know? Um, What's the best book that you've read? Autobiography of a Yogi. Okay. By Paramahansa Yogananda. Okay. And that's a good. That's a good book. Yeah. Um. Do you like cats or dogs? I love both, but mm -hmm. I'm I'm a cat person. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
And what animal would you be if you could be a an hawk? Animal? A hawk? Yeah. Okay. That's like a spirit animal of mine, hawk. Okay, just to like see everything and. Yes, yeah, powerful yeah. bird. You know, that's the bird on the San Miguel flag. You know, it's just okay. I, I resonate with it a lot. It's the hawk. Every okay. time I see it, I'm so captivated by them. You know, eagle or a hawk for sure. Nice. Yeah. Your favorite travel destination. Oh my goodness. I know that might be difficult That's hard. for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have multiple ones, but yeah. I'd say that my favorite travel destination is the one that is like when I go internal and I'm at peace. Okay, I like that. It's the best travel destination. Nice. Yes. Okay. Um, where is somewhere you want to travel? Like S- somewhere I wish to go? Yeah, you wish to go that uh, you haven't been before. Ethiopia. Okay. Yeah. Why Ethiopia? The roots, you know? Okay. Okay. See the roots. <laughs> yeah, I see the roots. Or if I could, I'd go to Wakanda. Yo, go see Black Panther if you haven't seen it already. I know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, favorite color? Uh, hmm. Depends on my mood. Okay. Yeah. Um, but I'd say uh, I grew up loving blue. Uh, I appreciate red. Um, uh, I, I'm digging teal. Okay. You know what I'm saying, and I always wear black if I can. Yeah. Okay. And your favorite quote? A little encouragement goes a long way. Okay. Yeah. I like that. Mm. And where can people find you? Like on social media and yes, all that uh, stuff. You can find me on Instagram or YouTube. Um, Frost Flow. No funny spellings altogether. Frost Flow. Mm-hmm. Um, you can find me on Facebook if you're looking that deep. Uh, Frostalino, mm-hmm. Ground Illusions Crew. Uh, I have a little blog called Full Step Saga. Saga okay. as in S A G A uh, dot C A or dot com. What is it anymore? I haven't like played with that in a while. Okay, but yeah, so Full Step all, Saga. All um, so that link will be on our website. So if you click the episode with Frost, that link to his um, website will be there. Yeah, so check that out, fullstepsaga.com. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I'm fairly easy to find, I believe. So, yeah, just look up my name, Frost Flow. You'll find me somehow. Okay, awesome. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much for Thank being on for the podcast me. and, like, sharing all your knowledge and experiences. It's and been fun. Thank you for, like, yeah. having me here, asking questions and having a good conversation. Uh, yeah. Appreciate it. Awesome. Thank yeah. you. And, like... If you have any questions that you'd like us to ask him for maybe a future podcast, feel free to, you know, just comment in the YouTube videos or send an email or find us on um, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook at My Best Life Podcast. And sure. Yeah. And also, uh, you know, just give a shout out to The Hub, uh, everyone who attends The Hub through Unity and Nexus Youth Services. A sponsored by Ontario Trillium Foundation. Mm-hmm. We're at the hub every Thursday inside City Hall, Mississauga from 6 to 8 p.m. Every Friday at Mississauga Valley Community Center Gymnasium from 5.30 to 7.30 p.m. Mm-hmm. And also at the YMCA Union Street Brampton location every Saturday night from 7 to 9. And you can look us up on Facebook. Uh, that's the hub unity nexus mississauga or on instagram as saga s-a-u-g-a hub saga hub on instagram look us up come check it out and see what all the word is about you know so enjoy yourself and i hope you still listen if you are much love and peace to you take care now thank you bye bye sick nice awesome yeah that was good thank you very much super fun yeah you can you can beep off. That <laughs> That's the little thing. I don't want to like you know ruin anyone's ears with my beatbox. You know. <laughs> <laughs>